we had a cranial nerve three injury. Um, it had since healed. Um, maybe we, you, you use the term healed incorrectly because you're still noticing some double vision, blurry vision, those types of things. Um, we complain of a little bit of uh, occipital neuralgia on the right side and the pain travels up and around the head and refers back to that right eye, right? So that gives you some problems. Um, you're also having balance issues where you can't walk very easily. Um, you're getting unstable uh, to the right, so you're kind of swaying to the right, mm -hmm. uh, those types of things. So she feels more instability to the right side. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a right eye. We know cranial nerve three is most affected. So when we look at her, we're gonna look at some of the eye muscles, the cranial nerves, that cranial, or the, the cranial nerve three controls different eye muscles, right? So we know that, because we know our neurology, we know that pure cranial nerve three is only upward eye movement of the right eye. So we're probably going to expect to see the worst double vision when she looks upwards. And that is in fact, of course, what we found earlier. Mm -hmm. So Bailey, if you could come in a little closer. So you can watch that in convergence, she does fine, right? She's doing fine with that, that's fantastic. Because she has a little help, cranial nerve three is intact, it's great. She has help from superior oblique muscle because that's gonna send the eyes in this way down and to the left and that's controlled by cranial nerve four. But this is fantastic. To the right, we don't care because that's cranial nerve six controlling the lateral rectus. Looking downwards gets a little help from the superior oblique, superior oblique muscle once again. When we look upwards, see that eyeball? See that right eye, see it goes up? She's able to do it, but once we go further up, see that left eye, keep going. Does that pick that up pretty well? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So now we, we wanna say, okay, we know that's the thing. And that makes sense when she's looking upward, she'd have double because her eyes are, there's a discrepancy between the two. When she looks over her left shoulder in traffic and tries to look at different cars or whatever it might be, then she notices that gets a little worse for her. So you follow this, you look way over, but we see she can do it. However, it's subtle yet enough that we would expect her when she's really straining cranial nerve three to have the most difficulty because that's working, that's bringing, that cranial three is bringing the eye way over to, you know, past the nose, really looking as far as possible to the left. And that's gonna give that the most potential for disruption. Um, the other thing we talked about is that when you look at Cranial nerve three, right? The superior muscles on the right eye, they are intorters of the eye. So if the eye muscles that intort the eye are weak, what happens when they're, when they're not doing well is they're going to extort. And so you're gonna get the, uh, the head, if you will, the eye would come this way. So being the neurolog neurological system that we are, we're gonna compensate the opposite way, okay? So she's gonna have a head tilt to the left. Now, she, and we didn't know that, but she said that that's exactly what happens. I haven't seen it yet, but I bet when you get tired and different types mm -hmm. of things, I bet that comes on. And because she has that head tilt to the left, she's gonna put consistent strain on these suboccipital muscles on that right side and provide dysfunction and injury to that region, which would give her, ipso facto, right greater occipital neuralgia, right? Or occipital neuralgia. And that's gonna give her that referred pain up and around into that right eye, which is exactly what she experiences. Now, the other thing we know is that if we were to pick, without knowing anything, if we were to pick which cerebellum or brainstem we wanted to activate, we'd wanna look at the right cerebellum and right, right brainstem because that cerebellum controls the super muscles on that eye and will help give us more intorsion aspect. Also, that will affect the left mesencephalon, so we may wanna do more right shoulder type activity, which will be very rubrospinal, uh, but cerebellar activity, activity as well, to get that left mesencephalon activated, which will also control the contralateral superior muscles of the eye, or the right eye intorters. So, now we know a lot more in our examination than that, but if we just went off history and what we just found in a quick eye test, we, we could treat her extremely well without anything else. The good news is we have a lot more tools and in uh, procedures to take her through, so she's gonna do super well. All right, good stuff.